looking at this may be a little confusing, but really if we can just figure out this, this, well, what the heck, this stuff right here, we'll be in great shape, okay? And here's why. Uh, all this stuff here at the bottom, these powers of I stuff, right? So, for example, I squared is the same as I times I. Well, what is I? I is the square root of negative 1, right? So this would be kind of like the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Right there. <clears throat> Um, which is kind of like taking the square root of negative 1 and squaring that. Maybe the parentheses should be right here with the squared. Uh, the only difference is, is since we're dealing with imaginary numbers now, and again this would be I squared, is that uh, the square cancels out the square root and you're left with just a negative 1. Which is how we get this stuff. And it would work the same way for the i cubed. So now I've got an i squared times i, which is negative 1 times i, which we could also write as a negative 1i, or a negative i, like this. All right, so let's try this. So we know that i is the square root of negative 1. There's no real easy way around that. It's just i is an imaginary number. It's one imaginary number. That is the square root of a negative, and nothing times itself would give us a negative right there, right? So if I did i times i, this would be the same as i squared, right? Is everyone okay there? I, I hope I'm not beating a dead horse here for some of you. Well, i is the square root of negative 1, and that will be multiplied by the square root of negative 1, kind of like this right here right uh, well this is kind of the same thing as saying we're gonna take the square root of negative 1 and we're gonna square that see how now we've got the square and the square root which cancel each other out and that gives us negative 1 because that's all we had left in the square root there right so <clears throat> this is I squared is negative 1, or it makes it worse. Well, <laughs> I cubed is the same as I times I squared. Actually, I'm going to make that I squared times I. That'll make it work a little bit better. Well, based on what we just found out, right, is I squared is negative 1, and then it would just be times an I. And that's how we get the negative i value for i cube. <laughs> so you can't write negative. So let's look at i to the power 4, right? That would be the same as uh, i squared times i squared, right? Well, we already know what i squared is. i squared is a negative 1. So we really have a negative 1 times negative 1, which is... One. So the next one in this pattern, is because I've just gone through i, i squared, i cubed, i to the fourth. Well, i to the fifth is the same as i to the fourth times i, like this. Well, we already know what i to the fourth is. One. And then I just have one times i, which is i. So that takes us back to the start. So every four terms, this will repeat. If, if we were looking at it as a sequence. It is a problem nonetheless, so we'll, we'll get into some other problems with the square root stuff. Uh, on this one, we just want to find the power of i. And since it goes by every fourth power, right? Uh, for example, um, i to the, thank you. Let's try the 12th, and then it will be multiplied by i to the third power here. Uh, because in this case, since we have the same base i, we would add those two exponents, which would give us 15. All right, now 12 is a multiple of 4, right? 
And what that means is that, and we already know that i to the fourth is one. So in other words, I have i to the fourth cubed from the i twelfth. And I'm going to multiply this by i cubed. Well, what was i to the fourth? One. Now, yeah, we could look back and we would find that i to the fourth is one. And then this is multiplied by i cubed. Well, what's one cubed? One. So I would really just have an i cubed in, in this. That's correct. So i cubed is the same as i squared times i. We can put to the power of 1 if we want. i squared is negative 1. So times that i gives us our final answer, which is negative i. If, if we were to look at this a little bit differently, right, we'd do i to the power of 15, and the closest thing to that, well, I guess we would just take the 15 and kind of divide it by 4 in this case. So 15 divided by 4 gives us 3 with a remainder of 3, which means it's the same as i to the power of 3. That's the remainder. And we can... we. We can kind of see from this problem, the 3 was with that uh, i to the power 4 cubed, which is what makes it a 1, which means it kind of cancels out. Every fourth multiple, every multiple of 4 would just give you a 1. So when we divide those out, we're just kind of making that a 1. And then we've got 3 left over, so that gave us, gave us i cubed, which is negative i. Let's try making one up. I to the power of, what do you guys want? 18. 18. 18 sounds great. Well, now we got to choose. I mean, do you guys want me to show you it using the sequences, or should we do it just by dividing by the 4? Just divide. Divide by 4. All right. So we're going to take the 18 and divide it by 4, which would give us 4 with the remainder of 2. Um, do you guys want me to use long division to show that? No? Okay. Uh, what this means is that the 4 doesn't really matter because every fourth power of i is 1. So I'm just going to look at this. This is going to be the same as i squared, which is like i times i. And every i is the square root of negative 1. So I got the square root of negative 1 times negative 1. That's uh, square root of negative 1. Which is the same as the square root of negative 1. But again, I would square that. And the square takes away the square root, which makes this a negative 1. All right, let's try another one then. Do you like I of 36, I guess? 36? Let's make it... 37? 237, just to make it real... Super awesome, right? <laughs> well, on this one, I may have to, not that, well, I'm going to use <laughs> long division for this one. So I'm just going to take this, divide it by 4, and whatever is remaining out of this, I will compare that to i to that power. 4 won't go into 2, but it will go into 23 five times. Again, this isn't really the important part, but it's going to help us find our remainder. 4 won't go into 3, but it will go into 37 nine times. So then I would subtract 36. This gives us a remainder of 1. So this is the same as i to the power of 1. Of course, we don't usually show the power of 1. And, well, that, that's as far as we can simplify that. 